We're at Masada. We're not on the summit yet. We're inside. But there's a model here that just shows very well the site and the essential things, and maybe this will give a better idea than, than going up on the summit. It's, uh, you see a model of the, of the area. It's a very strong mountain in the latter, latter stages of the Jewish revolt. Uh, Jewish zealot fighters barricaded themselves up here, slew the Roman garrison, took this fortress, uh, which was surrounded by walls that had been fortified by Herod the Great, and this is the last bastion of defense. It was well chosen as a place to defend because if you look at it, the slopes are very steep and it's inaccessible. If you have a wall on top of towers and it's guarded, there's no place to climb up. There are two points where it was possible to get up to the summit. Neither one was easy. The first one's called the Snake Path, and if you look, maybe you can see it zigzagging towards the bottom and working up closer to the top. You can see it going back and forth, maybe in the shadows there. I climbed that back in 2000 by foot. It was quite a trek, but uh, I managed to do it. But uh, an attacking army couldn't use that because you can only go up one or two at a time. It's single file, basically, and they can pick you off along the way, and you can't get any uh, assault built that way. But on the other side here, this is how they did it. It's not quite as far. There was a rock spur there, and they had Jewish captives build a ramp. We're in the northern edge of Masada at uh, Herod's palace complex. And this is an example of the defensibility of the site. You look down and you can see the slopes are so steep and the terrain is so rugged, it's impossible to advance an attacking army you know, up the sides of the slope. If you look, coming up, look at the sides, these cliffs, there's no path, there's no way to climb it. And if you put a fortified wall up at the top with fighters up there, I, you, you can't do it. But you can also see the solution the Romans came up with. If you look over to the right, there's the ramp they built. Of course, and it's eroded away from over the centuries, but the ramp is still there, essentially. And that's the ramp the Romans constructed and climbed up to get right up to the walls with their battering rams and their siege equipment and a lot of soldiers at once and where they broke through. We're at a key point to the Battle of Masada. This is the point where I'm standing where the Romans breached through the wall and the fortress was taken. Now you can look and see back here a casemate in the wall, a casemate system. They had uh, two walls, it was like a, like a room basically, but in times of war they, would, they could fill the room up with earth and rocks and make it one massive thick wall. And on the other side of me is another one, but if you look where I'm standing there's no casemate here. There are no walls, no room or anything. It was all destroyed. If you look down, you can see the Roman ramp. It's eroded, as I mentioned earlier, to some degree over the years, but this is the ramp the Romans built. They came up here in 73 or 74 AD and uh, had a siege tower come up here. They had ballista shooting heavy stones and rocks at the wall to weaken it and try to break it. They launched fire uh, arrows and torches at it because the Jews built a counter wall of wood and earth to withstand the shock of the battering ram but the Romans burned it with fire, and this is where all that happened. This was the point uh, where the fighting was so thick, and the Romans finally prevailed in the, in the fighting here at Masada. And the next day, the Romans came through this spot right here into the fortress, but they found nothing until they discovered uh, dead bodies of Jewish fighters and their families who had all killed themselves the night before.